Hello, and thank you for joining me on another one of my tech series videos. For those of you who don't know me, I always had a lot of passion for technology, and here I'm going to share some of that with you. If you find this video entertaining and informative, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And now, please sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode about my immersion into tech as the time-lapse traveler. The video you're about to see is for a scooter that a friend of mine let me borrow. As a disclaimer, I haven't been paid to make this review, and it includes just my honest opinions. Other than this intro and some shots at the end of this video, there is no time-lapse footage anywhere during the review, just like in the other reviews that I've made in the past. Also, if you would like to see more of these sites, there will be a much longer version of this video where I visit many other places not seen here. And now enjoy this feature presentation. Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of the Time Lapse Traveler. This time I am uh, going back to my, well, what I uh, like to consider my roots that I developed making electric scooter reviews. So this time right here I got the Dark Knight. It's the newest, the latest and greatest scooter that I've uh, gotten my hands on so far. This time I uh, was allowed the awesome opportunity to borrow this thing for a few days to give it like a really nice test. Previously, the electric scooters that I reviewed, they had very short, brief little stints, but this time I actually get to test out this awesome scooter for a couple of days before returning it. So I'll be able to give you guys my full unbiased review, everything that I think about it, all the pros and cons, and why possibly, if you're looking for a scooter for yourself, this would be a pretty good choice for you. Uh, right here, I am uh, currently in Surendra because I thought that this would be a pretty nice location to show up the scooter. I can't really ride it over here much because first of all, they don't allow scooters here in general, but even a little bit further down in High Street, where I do typically ride my little Xiaomi scooter, this one is just too much of a beast. And uh, <laughs> yeah, there's no way that I'd be able to take this around the civilians. So yeah, right now it's still daytime. So these awesome lights over here don't really get shown very well. But let me tell you guys, it's really cool how this thing lights up. The show that this thing makes alongside with these left and right turn signals. Very few scooters actually have that feature. So that's one of the things that makes this scooter very special and unique. But there are a lot of other things that I really like about this one. One other feature that you don't often see in many other scooters is that the handlebars here actually are collapsible. All you have to do is just simply twist this knob over here and boom. Uh, especially if you get this uh, battery pack out of the way, then you can really get these handlebars down further. Now the reason why this is here actually is for these side lights. Uh, this is one of the things that doesn't come standard with the scooter. This was done aftermarket as you could tell by the way that this was put together. The lights that you see here in the floor panel, they actually do come with the scooter. So this awesome light show, which by the way is changeable, these are full RGB customizable lights that you can set to your liking using an app. I just like the blue color, so as you can tell, I'm all about the blue color. But like I said, you can change it to anything you want. You can make it all the colors of the rainbow. You can make it strobe and do all kinds of crazy effects. The wheels here are really nice and large, which is one of the good things at high speeds. When you're taking it off the sidewalks and onto the main road, you can actually get some nice control out of this thing. The people that came up with the design for this scooter really did a pretty good job at coming up with the different specifications because the tire size, I think, is just right. Any bigger would be pretty difficult to actually maneuver. The flatness or the roundness, you know, however you want to look at it, of these tires, I think it's pretty much just perfect. It's a very good balance between speed, maneuverability, and control. This has two hydraulic disc brakes in the back and in the front. And uh, this actually uses the same brake fluid as motorcycles. So this scooter can actually be considered a hybrid scooter. It's kind of more as a stand-up electric motorcycle than a, a typical scooter would be. Yeah, this thing is pretty serious. The suspension system here is really smooth. When you're riding over rough terrain or bumps or whatever, the front suspension and the rear suspension do a fantastic job at making the ride as smooth as it gets. And of course, the power and the performance. As most of the other high-powered scooters have, this has not only the eco and slash turbo button, but also single and dual motor function because this model has two motors, one in the front and one in the back, and then you can cycle between the two functions. Plus, on top of that, this panel over here, you can also cycle through gear one, two, and three. So right now I'm starting at 420 kilometers, as the odometer says. So this scooter is really mostly pretty new. The battery has been fully charged, so I should be able to get really good performance out of this one. All right, I guess that's enough for the initial specifications and description, but uh, I think it's probably time to take it on the road. What do you say? Shall we? Alright, let's start this thing nice and slow. 
We're going on economy mode right now on the first gear. So this is actually as slow as it's gonna get. I have to really try to get into the idea of getting on the road instead of being just on the sidewalk as usual. Then the performance of this scooter on the lowest speed is significantly more powerful than my Xiaomi scooter. Now the maximum speed, as you can see, is actually not that high. It's maxing out at 21 kilometers an hour. But again, this is the lowest setting that we got. I just took it off economy mode and boom, right away we're hitting 33 kilometers an hour. It's already faster than my scooter can possibly go. Now this scooter is not quite as nimble as my Xiaomi, but still gets me around quite nicely. One cool thing about riding an electric scooter is that the regulations that apply are somewhere between a pedestrian and uh, an actual motorcycle. As long as you don't do anything completely stupid, you should be all right. But then again, this scooter is not a portable little toy. And this one is definitely a more serious machine. So I have to be more careful at how I treat it and how I get around on the road over here with this one. All right, so yeah, right now we're still on the one motor mode on the first gear. Yeah, it's like 32 kilometers an hour right now. I'm so used to a much less powered scooter, so <laughs> kind of hesitant to go off higher than this, especially since there's a significant amount of traffic up ahead. The ride is smooth, guys. Really silky. Nice control, nice handling over here. Very responsive brake. So cool. All right, no traffic in front of me, so let's go up a notch. Second gear. Now 44, 45 kilometers an hour. 47, 48, wow. This is only the second gear, guys. As bumpy as that was supposed to be, it actually felt pretty smooth. Now this whole time I'm well aware that I can go way faster than this. You know what? Here I think I should. Because I'm going to be going up hill. So switching to three. Now this is a fairly steepish hill here. And boom, 41 kilometers an hour. Oh, check out the Porsche. That's hot. Nice. So smooth, guys. I love the performance of this thing. There's Forbes Town. Really cool neighborhood to hang out in, by the way. Gear 2. Damn, this thing accelerates like nothing. It maneuvers so well, too. Oh, you know what? Let's see how this thing functions off-road. That's a test I haven't done yet. Oh, the shocks and the suspension here, they work really well. Nice. Eventually there's going to be a building over here. I wonder how soon that's going to happen. Oh, second motor. Dangerous stuff. Yeah. Here is another example of how a scooter like this gets you the best of both worlds. While the gas-powered scooters in front of me couldn't enter the open-air food market, the guard was waving me inside. I however had other plans to show how you can go truly virtually anywhere with an electric scooter, even a bulky one like this. This is new, I haven't seen this here before. Check this out guys. How beautiful is this place, huh? Looks like they must have some kind of shows over here when the light goes down. See, I'm not the only one here with a big scooter, but this is where you start coming into some trouble. Because my small scooter, I would have no problem just taking it across these steps over here and onto the other side. This one, however, it's gonna give me trouble even with these two steps here. Oh, this is heavy. Yeah, it's, more, it's about three times the weight of my scooter. Still very much doable. It's not like a motorcycle or anything, but <laughs> yeah. My Xiaomi, I can just lift it very easily with one hand. This is not a single hand operation scooter. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one of the most scenic spots right here. All right, now that I'm back in my own neighborhood, I gotta get something to eat because I just realized I don't have anything ready to eat at home right now. So let's see if Seasick Hooray has what I need. Namely, if they have chicken. Oh, please have the chicken, please have the chicken. Hi, oh, you closed already? Oh shoot, so bad. All right, all right, thanks anyway. Bad luck there. Do we have a plan B? Maybe I can get some Tokyo Tokyo. Much later. One of the especially cool things about this one is that you can change the colors pretty easily. Change the colors with the remote. Let's you make it go all the colors of the rainbow. 
and have different effects too. The lights on the side though, they're connected to this power bank, so that's kind of separate. Alright, so let's get the acceleration test started over here. Start nice and slow on economy mode. Doesn't matter what gear you're on because they're all the same. Economy mode is just nice and slow. Maximum speed is about 21 kilometers an hour. So let's start from a starting position as one would. And three, two, one, go. And 15. Boom, that's it. That is how fast it takes on economy mode to get to the maximum speed of 21 kilometers an hour. Next, let's get off economy mode, single motor, and gear one. Three, two, one, go. Acceleration is definitely faster, and the maximum speed is also higher. And we're reaching, there we go. That is the maximum speed, about 31 kilometers an hour. Next gear, gear two, still on single motor mode. Three, two, one, go. And accelerating past 30. And boom, there we go, 41. Now let's get to gear three, single motor mode. Starting position, three, two, one, go. This is where it struggles to get up to the maximum speed because it's just one motor that's doing all the work. Let's see how long it's gonna take. Boom, there we go. Hit 50. All right, now let's turn around and enable the second motor to get a little bit more serious. Do a motor mode, gear one. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Whoa, acceleration is really quick, right away. Maximum speed is not that high though. And I think we're it, that's it. I didn't expect 34, I expected 31, but you saw that was really fast. Second gear, which will get us to a higher maximum speed. All right, three, two, one, go. Booyah. Yes! 50 kilometers an hour. All right, that was nice, so fast. Last, but certainly not least. Let's get to dual motor, gear three. This is the heart pumping acceleration right here. Whew. All right, three, two, one, go. Whoa, holy moly. Pedal to the metal, everyone. That's quick, already at plus 50. Oh yeah, there we go, 61. That was fast, 62. I didn't expect that. That's some fast speed right there, ladies and gentlemen. 
And that is our acceleration test. This thing accelerates like a dream, guys. If you want to be the boss of the road, own the environment, then you definitely want to go for the dual motor model. Be the boss. Booyah! Wow. The next morning. Good morning. So it's a uh, next day. It's a fine day here in Manila, Philippines. And I'm taking out the scooter again, the dark night, for a second day of testing to see what this baby can do. I gotta tell you guys, the more I ride it, the more I'm enjoying it. I think I might have mentioned that yesterday as well, but honestly, for city streets, unnecessarily powerful. You know, I'm so used to standing with uh, the ballerina mode, <laughs> with one, one leg a little bit in front of the other. But with this scooter, it's totally not necessary because the platform is so wide, I can very comfortably stand with two feet right next to each other. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how this thing folds down. The mechanism here is pretty good. The only trick for me currently right now is that it actually requires two hands. And uh, let's see if I can do this. Maybe I'll stick this in my shoe. Yeah, you know what, this should work. All right, so what you do is pull down this lever, which is really easy, it's uh, not tight at all. And then this, uh, this lever right here is a little bit tighter, but it doesn't require too much strength either. So just pull it like that. And then, boom, just like that, clicks in right over here. Some uh, scooters, they have a clicking mechanism that's uh, right over here at the top of the stem. But this one clicks in right here at the bottom. Now, on top of that, as I was showing previously briefly, this also folds down. It's very cool that the handlebars so get folded down like this because very, very few scooters actually have this feature. So that's a big plus. We're about to find out just how much of a benefit this is because what I'm going to try to do now is see if I can hail a cab, a typical uh, Toyota Vios, the most common taxi cab that you can get over here, and see if I can squeeze that into the trunk. Let's see if I'll be able to find a taxi driver kind enough to let me use his car as a test bed for this. Great, so we're able to find a taxi driver who's willing to help me out with this. That's really cool. Koya, can, can you just do me a favor? Can you just hold this? Beautiful, thank you. Come on, a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. There we go. Voila, thank you. And see, it fits. Yes, it's kind of a tight fit, but as you can see, this is a typical Toyota Vios, the most common grab taxi car that you can get. And uh, yeah, even this big boy scooter can fit inside. So if you run out of power, it's not an issue. You can always get a ride. So there you go. And so to get it back up again, you just basically do the same thing in reverse. You open this lever, which unlocks it. Raise up the stem, you hear that click, that one back in. Raise up this lever so that it holds, and you're all set with that. Next, the handlebars, put them together so that they're leveled, and then just screw this back in. Super tight, super steady. Honestly, I can't say that it could be possibly any easier, so that's an awesome design choice. All right, so found this uh, nice little secluded area to relax a little bit after a long ride. Uh, it's the Science in the Park uh, here by BGC High Street, pretty close back to my home neighborhood right now. After about two days riding the dark night here, I have to say that, you know what, it's pretty damn good. I started at what, 430, uh, 420? Yeah, I think it was 420 kilometers. Right now I am at 448. It's a little hard to read. This uh, LCD is not the brightest, but at the same time, it doesn't drag on the power either. Usually, it's pretty easy to read, but in the super bright sun, it's not the sharpest, but gets the job done. Power and the performance of the scooter is amazing, as I mentioned before, numerous times throughout my ride. Comes in many different configurations, different colors. You can have one motor or two motor options. You can have different customizations as far as having a seat to chill out on, so you can go on those long rides without putting any stress on your knees. Although you wouldn't be putting too much stress on your knees as it is because the shock suspension system here is really good. I was able to take it off-road, I took it on some rough terrain and performed really well. The brake system here is really good except because you do get to go really fast. The mass of the scooter together with the rider is just not nearly as heavy as a car obviously or even a motorcycle. 
So you're just not going to be able to stop very quickly. And unfortunately, what, what tends to happen is you really cannot rely too much on the front brake, first of all, because you're very likely to just fly over the handlebars. So that's pretty dangerous. The rear brake gets the job done typically, but the problem is that the mass will just make you start losing control because the rear wheel will lock up. There's going to be like a fish tailing effect, which does get to be a little dangerous. So you have to be very careful with that. One improvement that I wish that this scooter had was some kind of um, anti-lock brake system. I don't know if any scooters actually have that. That's a pretty advanced thing. Thing is, this is a pretty advanced scooter. It's a very good value that you can get for this one. An anti-lock brake system would be probably, I don't know, maybe a little bit too much of an ask. These brakes are really good. The tires are fantastic. They have just enough grip to keep really good control. I didn't get to ride it on wet surfaces, but I did go through some puddles. Uh, got the tires a little bit wet and uh, it worked really well. I didn't uh, feel like I was losing control or anything, except when you try to slow down fast. Because yeah, this thing will start to lose a bit of a control. This is the only real downside negative that I can imagine with the scooter. Yeah, it's also pretty heavy, but uh, you know, you can't really expect this to be, you know, a single hand operation. Like today I uh, wanted to go on the Della Rosa overpass. But because the escalator was not working over there, since it's too early, I just couldn't get it up over there. And so I didn't even bother. If it was my own Xiaomi scooter, wouldn't have been a problem. I could just pick it up with one hand, bring it up on top of the staircase, and no issues. This one, it does have a very useful handle over here, which helps, but that's, <laughs> that's only going to get you so far. You could also customize other things here, like put these uh, little lights over here for a turn signal. It's actually pretty useful. Uh, I'm not really used to uh, using a turn signal on a scooter normally, but that's actually really cool. So this light comes on as well as this one. And even in the bright sunlight, you can still see it. So that's definitely cool. It's a very mean looking machine, as a Dark Knight should be. So yeah, there you have it. I'm very, very happy with uh, the experience that I had on this. If I had any actual need of having a scooter like this that will take me all over the city and beyond, then I would definitely be recommending this one to myself as well. But for now I'm going to stick with my Xiaomi, except it's really great to know what else is out there. There's going to be a link to the description down below uh, where you can purchase this thing for yourself. And if you have any questions or comments about anything, then please do uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. In the description you'll find all the information about how you can order this and any other additional information that is uh, useful for getting about this scooter so please leave your thoughts in the comment section i would really love to know what you thought about this review i do try my best to cover all the bases and to show the scooter from every angle every perspective and also describe it uh, to my best uh, ability if i miss anything if there's any feature that uh, you would like for me to mention then please comment that and i will reply to you as soon as i can usually i reply to all my comments really quickly so um, we can keep in touch. In the meantime, I'm going to be signing off right here. So I hope you enjoyed this review video of the Dark Knight scooter. If you did, then please do hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click on the bell icon to get notified of my upcoming videos. Please always do take care of yourselves and each other. And of course, keep looking out for more videos coming at you from the Time Lapse Traveler. If you've made it this far, then you clearly enjoyed the way that I make my videos. And so, I invite you to watch the extended version of this review, where although there's not much additional information about the Dark Knight scooter, you can watch way more environments that I passed through to put together this video review. I got to visit my old neighborhood in Makati, and pass through other beautiful places not seen in this video. The link for that video will be in the description. Thank you again for watching this video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.